Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. Zan Kosoputsky has advanced to 18-0 following a pretty routine victory over faded former title contender Johan Dorp of France. So this one ended after five rounds, uh, Dorpa not answering the bell for round six. He had an injury to his eye, and we'll come to that because that was at the hands of Kosobutsky, who effectively cruised. And so what I'll do is I'll quickly run through the action, a few thoughts on it, uh, Dorpa, his career, but also what about Zahn Kosobutsky, the what next? The guy is 33 years old, 18 and 0, really needing that next thing. And what is that next thing? And that's the issue. Is Universum, his promoter, able to actually push him on to greater and higher honours? It's unclear at this stage. And remembering as well, he does have a co-promotional deal with a certain British promoter. Anyway, to the fight proper. So heading into this one, uh, when it was announced, you know, I, and this was actually announced a couple of times, it was put off the first time due to COVID. This was always going to be a bit of a showcase fight. Zahn Kosobutsky against Johan Dorpa, who's really been sort of faded for a few years now. He has not been a contender for a few years. His best days, long gone, 41 years old, heading into this one. We saw him get stopped by Tony Yoker a couple of years ago in a round, although Dorpa claimed rabbit punches, etc. In this fight, what you had, it, and I want to say this about Zahn Kosobutsky because maybe we need to give him a nickname here, uh, and perhaps that nickname should be Cruise Control, because it felt like he was just cruising the whole fight. He'd been out of the ring for six months. It looked like he wanted the rounds, but it was a very Zahn Kosobutsky type performance, pretty much to a T where he looks relaxed. He's just doing his work. It sort of resembles some sort of sparring session. He took it pretty easy in that first round. He was uh, moving Dorpa. He was letting uh, his jab go, his left hand. On the other end, Johan Dorpa, fleshy, uh, just didn't really sort of seem to be in the fight at all from the first round. Uh, he obviously once was known as a very durable guy, uh, but he was feeling the weight of uh, Zahn Kosobutsky's sh shots, and he does have power in both hands. And in the second round, that should have been a ruled a knockdown, actually. Zahn Kosobutsky decides to step it up. He hits Dorpa with a left hand and immediately on him with another left hand. Dorpa careens into the ropes and actually basically threw them. And that was the only thing that actually held him up. And so he was on his way down and halfway up the ring, but he sort of caught himself and he was halfway up the ropes. Uh, and it wasn't ruled a knockdown. And it should have been. But that was by the by. But after that, you saw Kotsubutsky, at least for part of that rest of the round, was uh, stepping it up with his pressure and a little bit more volume. But it sort of dropped back down in round three. But what you had was Zahn Kosobutsky basically throwing all the shots of the book, just taking his time in doing it. So he was good on the jab. He was good with body shots with both hands. He was peppering Dorpa, especially that left eye with the straight left in his jab. And you could see the effects of it winding up. But Dorpa was so bad in this fight. It was almost like target practice at times. And there was an odd moment in the third round where Johan Dorpa, he actually let his hands go, and I think it was like a three or four punch combination, and the crowd cheered. So that sort of tells you, you know, where Johan Dorper is at at this stage in his career. Uh, yeah, he wasn't much chop and Kosobutsky. I mean, I say he was cruising, but it was almost like he was idling in neutral, like he wanted the rounds. And if he could have stepped it up, you know, he would have stepped it up if he wanted to. But he just seemed content just to apply pressure, slowly break Johan Dorper down. And that's exactly what we saw. And by the end of the fourth round, Johan Dorper's eye was looking pretty busted up. In the fifth round, he was, and here's a sort of shot of Dorper after round four, and he's starting to resemble, you know, he was on the way to resembling a certain Goonies character. 
So I posted this on Twitter as well. I thought it was funny, but you may not. But anyway, he was piecing him up and Duopal was looking worse for wear. Basically, after the second round or into the second round, Johan Duopal looked gassed. He clearly is, isn't able to sort of... Um, get himself into the sort of shape that he's required to fight at this sort of level anymore and he was basically a sitting duck and in round five Azan Kosobutsky stepped it up in terms of his placement his power shots everything was heavy and he was peppering Duopa and really beating him up and there was one moment where he cracked him with a shot to the head and Duopa was visibly wobbled stunned and maybe Kosobutsky thought, well, that's the fight over. The ref's going to jump in because he starts to back off. And then when um, Duopa starts to, you know, get his head and sort of self back into, you know, position, he's like, oh, OK, well, I'll just keep continuing. Continues to bust him up, body and head. That left eye is looking increasingly bad. And heading into round six, Duopa did not come out. So I don't know if the, the doctor was involved. Uh, it was a little unclear, but they did announce afterwards it was due to injury, which could have only been the eye, and it was starting to look pretty messed up. But he didn't come out to uh, to fight in round six. And a note on box record listed as a sixth round TKO, but there was only five rounds of action. So I'm not exactly sure you know, what happened and when and who was involved, if it was the corner or the doctor. But it's by the by, because this was a stoppage win for Zan. Kosobutsky who it just you know really cruised it was like some sort of uh, sparring session and if this was the first time that you had have seen Zan Kosobutsky because this fight was on Universe and Box Promotions YouTube channel I think people looking at him for the first time and go yeah he's got some power but I'm not sure because of the way that he fights and he sort of fights within himself he does pretty much kind of that Dimitri Bivol thing does enough and no more that people will look at him and maybe not be that impressed but the southpaw skills the power he's going to be a handful as he steps up and that's the thing that i want to get to now is what of zan kosobutsky and then we'll move briefly to um to johan Dorp because i think it's pretty clear after what i described in this fight how i think um or where i think uh, Dorpa should be going but what does Zan Kosobutsky do next? So he picked up a WBC Intercontinental title in this fight. I mean, uh, pretty much a useless trinket, really. The WB gets some, uh, C gets some fees. Zan Kosobutsky gets some ranking, something like that. He is in one or two ranking bodies at the moment. But what's that going to mean? Because it's there's kind of a couple of routes that he could go down. But that would require, I think, for where he is ranked, to try get him into eliminators because I don't think he's going to be a guy that people are going to be voluntarily saying yeah I want to fight this guy because his profile is not big he's a dangerous fighter he's sort of in that sort of Frank Sanchez um, sort of territory where he's a good heavyweight he's a tricky customer and if you're not good enough he's certainly going to beat you but it is sort of high risk low reward sort of stuff he sort of falls into that category but you got to look at him and go come on he's 33 years old it's go time now sure the pandemic might have sort of stymied things for him but it's the same for everyone else the division's been a bit of a weird place for the last couple of years less fights and uh, generally um, a lot of guys haven't been in the sort of fights you'd hope to see them in maybe a year or two ago because this sort of fight was a resume build, effectively. Duopa was washed. We knew that heading into this, this was going to be a win where, I mean, people will say this might be the best win of his career, but Duopa was so washed, it's probably not. I mean, there's some other wins earlier in his career, the last sort of couple of years, that I think probably he got more out of. But in terms of name recognition, well, Duopa fought for a title, what, five years ago, six years ago, whatever it was. So what now? Well, he probably needs where he's got some rankings to get an eliminator. That's one course of action, but that's probably going to require some pr um, pressure from his promoter, maybe a little bit of money to grease things, to get things moving. The other thing is, does he target some of the guys where he's fighting? So at the moment, he's been largely sort of fighting in Germany. Um, Universe and Box Promotions is based there. You've got a couple of other big promotional companies in, in the German context that are there. You've got EC Boxing. They've got um, Christian Hammer, Mahmoud Cha. Uh, there's a few others as well. Ali Aaron Demeregian, Victor Vickhurst. Probably won't be facing Vickhurst. But someone like a Demeregian or a Hammer 
that could be that immediate next step. But those guys are in fights at the, the end of the month. So maybe it's possible after that, but maybe they'll just keep things in house because generally what happens is those EC boxing guys have been going um, sort of farmed out to overseas promoters cards, that sort of thing. So maybe they wouldn't be, wouldn't be willing to sort of make a more sort of what would be, I guess, even though he's a Kazakh fighter, Zan Kosobutsky, they're probably not going to make what would be, in terms of promotional sense, a uh, domestic sort of dust up, as it were, in terms of those companies working together, because at the end of the day, they're in it for themselves, etc. I mean, it would be good to see some of those um, fighters that are sort of applying their trade in Germany, having those fights within Germany. And the other company is SES, Agi Kabial, and also Umut Kamkaran. But it looks like those guys are going to be fighting each other, uh, potentially for the EBU title. As we know, Kabial, a former European champion, he dropped the belt a couple of years ago. Ultimately, he really hasn't been up to much since. So maybe that's not going to be a possibility. Another option is back in March 2021, Frank Warren announced, and here is uh, sort of the tweet from Queensbury at the time, that they were now going to be co-promoting Zan Kosobutsky. And outside looking in, it doesn't look like that's sort of being utilized. I mean, you could maybe compare it to when Joseph Parker had a co-promotional deal with Top Rank a number of years ago, and that was in place for a few years, but Parker never utilized it. He never went to the United States and sort of um, fought on a Top Rank card, etc. So you're sort of in that territory where there's something in place with a British promoter and Frank Warren, but is it going to be utilized? Warren's not going to put Kosobutsky in with his um, main heavyweights, Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois, and obviously Tyson Fury, way out of reach of someone like Azan Kosobutsky at this point. So he's sort of in this a bit of a no man's land of what do they do next? Because in all reality, Kosobutsky needs those one or two extra fights at a higher level, those stepping stone fights to get him to the top level. And those next couple of fights that are at a higher level than this sort of one, because let's face it at the moment, um, Johan Dorpe washed, I mean, his, actually, I'll just go into his box rec. What does it say he's ranked in the world at the moment? Bear in mind, some of this will be based on his previous achievements. Has him 40th in the world. I think at this stage, he'd be lucky if he, in reality, if he was 40th in the world. Probably somewhere between top 50 and top 100 at this point. But he, Zan Kosobutsky needs someone that still got something left in the tank, still close to their prime or in their prime, uh, maybe in that sort of top 20 to top 40 level. He needs to face a live body, someone that we go, okay, this is where we get a, a true barometer of where you're at because I rate the guy. I mean, sure, these sorts of fights, and we've seen them before, Camille Sokolowski, some of the other fights, uh, Honoré Me, Ehrami, you know, he just sort of fights within himself, but then he lands some powerful shots, breaks guys down, stops them. And you go, yeah, there's something to this guy, but we need to see him step up. We need those next fights. Can Universum deliver that? Or is he going to be rotting on the vine? I mean, another guy you could sort of kind of go in the same boat, Aslimbek Makhmadov, who is fighting out of Canada. And he's doing well for himself there. He's just coming off a sort of facing a wash guy and Marius Vuk as well stopped him. But there's that perpetual question, what next? How do they get to that next level? What's going to happen with their careers? Or is it kind of rotting on the vine? Because there's a few guys like this. And I think Makhmadov and Kosobutsky sort of are squarely in that sort of um, early 30s, 32, 33, respectively. What's happening? Where are they going? Is it nowhere fast? Is it rotting on the vine territory? So they need to do something. And for Johan Dorpe, needs to retire. 41 years old completely ineffective he was fleshy his durability is clearly gone barely fired a shot so time for him to hang it up otherwise he is going to start looking um, like Lars from the Goonies yeah I think it's time for him to um, I mean there's a lot of these guys as we know it always happens some of these former title contenders you know sort of clipping the ticket the back end of their career trading on their names that sort of former title contender status they fought once at a good level but now they're well past it well past their prime and they're just uh, cashing checks um, and trading on that name recognition time for him to hang it up 
Probably won't though. All these guys seem to be just dragging on forever. Vak, uh, also Alexander Ustinov. There's a whole bundle of guys that are sort of tra traipsing around at the moment in their 40s, getting paydays and at risk of getting seriously hurt. Lucas Brown, another. Anyway, what did you make of the fight? Zan Kozabutsky, cruise control or sitting an idol as it was for this fight? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, or follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.